welcome back uh, to the existence and uh, uniqueness theorem of initial value problems. In the last lecture we have seen that uh, an initial value problem has a unique solution if the function satisfies a Lipschitz continuity condition with respect to the dependent variable y. So, we deal with um, initial value problem. So, our initial value problem d over d x is equal to f of x y and uh, the initial condition is y at x 0 is uh, y 0. So, where f is a function, f is a function which is defined on a domain which is a subset of R 2 to R and x 0 y 0 is a point an interior point inside D. is a d and um, is x 0 this is uh, point y 0. So, x 0 y 0 is the initial point initial condition and we now prove the existence of solution and uniqueness of solution uh, under Lipschitz condition with respect to y and a continuity condition with respect to x. So, Picard's theorem gives both existence and uniqueness and uniqueness part we have already proved and in this uh, theorem I will uh, concentrate only on the existence part. So, let me state the Picard's uh, theorem. Let D be a domain in R2 and F from D to R be a real valued function a real function satisfying the following conditions satisfying the following conditions. first one is f is continuous f is continuous on d with respect to both the argument uh, that is meaning of the all domain d and f of x y is Lipschitz continuous with respect to y on d with the constant with the Lipschitz constant alpha which is a uh, 
constant positive constant and let x 0 y 0 be an interior point an interior point on D and uh, let A and B be constants such that the rectangle R defined by set of all x y such that x minus x 0 is less than or equal to a and y minus y 0 is less than or equal to b. This rectangle is inside the domain d and let m be a constant capital M be a constant defined by maximum of the function f x y where x y is in D this maximum exists because f is continuous uh, so and we take uh, x y to vary in the rectangle rectangle r rectangle is a closed uh, set in inside d so therefore this maximum exists and let's define another constant h is equal to minimum of a and b by m then the initial value problem has has a unique solution y on the interval x minus x 0 is less than equal to h. So, this uh, is a Picard's uh, existence and uniqueness theorem. It gives both existence and uniqueness. The conditions we assume is f is uh, continuous on D and f x y is uh, Lipschitz with respect to y on D with the Lipschitz constant alpha and uh, the initial point x 0 y 0 is an interior point on D and we take a rectangle which is inside the domain D with a closed rectangle inside the domain such that uh, two constants are defined m is the maximum of the value uh, function in the rectangle R and h is the minimum of A and B by M. So, if I look at, so this is domain D and inside the domain we define a rectangle So, this point is x 0 y 0 So, is the point x 0 y 0 and this is this side is x is equal to x 0 plus a and this side x is equal to x 0 minus a and this side 
is y is equal to y0 plus b and this side y is equal to y0 minus b. So, we now prove the theorem proof. So, the proof uh, has more uh, technical details. Uh, so, since R is a closed rectangle, R is a closed rectangle. So, inside uh, the domain D, F satisfies all properties mentioned inside D, uh, inside R. Now, there are two situations, uh, okay, the, uh, two situations, one is if A is uh, less than B by M, so remember our uh, definition of the constant H which is a minimum of A B by A. So, H is defined as minimum of A B by M. So, in case if A is less than B by M, then H is equal to A. And if okay, in, the, in, the, in that case, we have a full rect the same rectangle, H is equal to A. And if uh, A is not, if uh, B by M, if B by M is less than A, then H is equal to B by M. In that case H is a number which is smaller than A. So, in that case we will have another rectangle. So, we will have another rectangle So, this line is x is equal to x 0 minus h. So, this line is x is equal to x 0 plus h. So, we have two rectangles one this you call it r 1 and the first rectangle is r or we can write r is set of all x y such that x minus x 0 is less than equal to a, y minus y 0 is less than equal to b and r 1 is set of all x y, x minus x 0 is less than equal to h, y minus y 0 the bound for y is the same b. So, if A is less than B by M, then these two rectangles coincide. Okay, in that case, R1 is same as R. If a B by M, if A is a greater than B by M, in this case, we will see that R1 comes inside R. So, Picard's uh, existence and uniqueness theorem says that it has a solution. The solution starting from x0, y0 okay, is a solution and the solution exists in the interval x minus x0, the solution exists in the interval x minus x0 less than equal to h. So, solution existence solution is 
on R1. So, depending upon the value of A, if A is uh, less than B by M, then this uh, the solution exists for the larger rectangle. If uh, A is greater than B by M, then the solution exists on a smaller rectangle R1. Okay, so, we prove uh, the theorem by the method of successive approximation. We prove the theorem by successive approximation. of the Picard's successive approximation of the Picard's iterands uh, denoted by phi 1 x, phi 2 x, phi 3 x etcetera. Uh, this iterates this because uh, iterands are defined on the interval x minus x 0 less than equal to h is defined on x minus x 0 is less than equal to h and are defined by phi 1 x. So, phi 1 is equal to y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t y 0 which is the initial condition that y 0 d t is a constant function d t and phi 2 x is y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t phi 1 t d t etcetera etcetera and phi n t. So, phi n of x is y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t phi n minus 1 t so, call this as equation 1. So, we prove the existence of solution solution to the initial value problem. on one side of the interval x 0 x 0 plus h we will prove the existence on one side of the point x 0 to x 0 plus h. Uh, similar arguments similar arguments hold for x 0 minus h to x 0. So, therefore, we prove only on one side and uniqueness is already been proved uniqueness uh, of solution follows from uniqueness theorem. Okay, theorem which we proved in the previous lecture. Now, we uh, 
divide the proof, we divide the proof into four parts. So, part A, part B, part C and part D. So, part A is in part A we will prove that the functions the functions phi n the sequence of function phi n defined by equation 1 is uh, is uh, well defined is well defined ok that is uh, and it is also continuous and so call it uh, is a a part is, is well defined and b is phi n Uh, phi n's have continuous derivatives continuous derivatives c it uh, obeys an estimate phi n x minus y 0 the difference between the initial point and all and phi n x. Uh, this is less than or equal to b that means all phi n's are within the rectangle b on x0 x0 plus h the interval on which we are proving the existence and d the when we evaluate the function f at this phi n x phi n x. So, this is well defined so this is part a in part a we will prove that the Picard's iterands uh, defined by equation 1. So, defined by equation 1 this phi n x this equation this is uh, well defined and uh, phi n's have continuous derivatives on the interval x 0 x 0 plus h and phi n obeys an estimate phi n x minus y 0 is less than or equal to b on this interval and uh, f of x phi n x is also defined that is part a we will prove it. And part B, so part B is the functions phi and x, the sequence of functions we define by 1 satisfy the following. Inequality. The following estimate. That's absolute value of phi n x minus phi n minus one x is bounded by m by alpha m is the maximum value of the function m is the maximum value of the function on the rectangle and alpha is ellipsis constant times alpha h to the power n divided by n factorial. This happens for all x in the interval x 0 x 0 plus h. 
So, the Picard's it, it runs uh, defines a sequence of function that sequence of function satisfies this estimate. Now, part 3 that is a part C is we will prove that as n goes to infinity as n goes to infinity the sequence of functions phi n this converges uniformly. So, this sequence of functions converges uniformly to a continuous function call it phi a continuous function phi on the interval x 0 x 0 plus h. Now, the fourth part part d of the proof is that we will prove that the limit function the limit function which is obtained in part c phi satisfies the limit function phi satisfies the given initial value problem given value problem IVP on the interval x 0 x 0 plus h. So, in short if we prove all these uh, four parts part a, b, c and d then we obtain a limit function phi which happens to be the solution of the initial value problem that proves existence of solution to the initial value problem and uniqueness is already been proved in the uniqueness theorem. So, let us uh, prove part by part. So, proof of part A. So, this we will we prove this by mathematical induction prove this by mathematical induction that is we will assume that the result is true for n minus 1 and uh, then we will prove that it is also true for n. Then we will check uh, this is correct for n is equal to 1 and then by the method of mathematical induction we conclude that this is true for all n. So, assume that So, assume that phi n minus 1 ex exists. So, phi n minus 1 x ex exists and it has continuous derivatives. On the interval x 0 x 0 plus h and it satisfies the estimate and it satisfies phi n minus 1 x minus y 0 is less than or equal to b okay, for all x in the interval x 0 x 0 plus h. Now, after assuming this we are going to show that this is these properties are also true for phi n if we assume that this property is 
are uh, true for phi n minus 1, we are going to show that this property is true for n phi n. So, this implies so, so this above conditions implies this implies that x phi n minus 1 x the point x phi n minus 1 x is in the rectangle R 1 because you have this bound phi phi n minus 1 x minus y 0 is less than or equal to b. So, that shows that it uh, and that x is in the x is in the interval x 0 x 0 plus h. So, the for the point x phi n minus 1 x is in R 1. Okay. Now, also uh, if this point is in R 1 uh, we have we can evaluate the function we can evaluate this function at this point. So, f of x phi n minus 1 x is defined and phi n minus 1 is continuous and f itself is continuous is defined and is continuous. with respect to x on x 0 x 0 plus h. So, further we have further if we evaluate the function f x phi n minus 1 since that is in the rectangle r 1 this can be evaluated for the function f because f is defined on R 1 and uh, this is going to and uh, we have seen this will have a bound less than or equal to m by hyp hypothesis. So, maximum value of f uh, on R is m that is the maximum of it. So, this on x 0 x 0 plus h and all this uh, discussion helps up us to look into the integral. So, consider the function phi n x which is defined as y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t phi n minus 1 t d t ok. Uh, now, we have seen that the function f is this function f is continuous with respect to x and it is well defined and uh, therefore, the, the properties mentioned above helps us to conclude that so phi n x exists. So, y 0 plus integral x 0 to x and uh, for the continuous function f this uh, integral exists and has continuous derivative. Since f is continuous with respect to the second argument, okay, f is continuous with respect to the second argument, so therefore this integral exists and uh, that can be uh, differentiated to get a continuous derivative on the interval x0, zero, x0 zero plus h. Now also consider. So, also if you find the estimate phi n x minus y 0 
the absolute value of phi n x minus y 0 by definition this is uh, in the uh, absolute value of integral x 0 to x f of t phi n t d t and this is less than or equal to integral x 0 to x absolute value of phi t phi n minus 1 phi n minus 1 above phi n minus 1 t d t and we have seen that uh, f of t phi n minus uh, 1 t is bounded by a constant m. So, therefore, this is uh, less than or equal to integral x 0 to x em d t which is integral x 0 to x uh, ok can straight away integrate this one and get m into x minus x 0 and x minus x 0 is less than equal to h. So, this is m of less than equal to h and m h is obviously less than equal to b by definition of h. So, h is minimum of a b by m. So, this all uh, arguments helps us to conclude that x phi n x this point uh, this lies in the rectangle. So, x phi n x lies in the rectangle R 1 and hence f at uh, f evaluated at x phi n x is defined since f is continuous. So, f is continuous phi n is continuous and uh, this f of x phi n x is continuous is defined and continuous on the interval x 0 x 0 plus h. So, what is what does it say? It says that it says that all properties so says that uh, this phi n is also satisfying all the properties we assumed in part a. Uh, now, uh, with the assumption that if uh, phi n minus 1 satisfies the properties, then phi n also satisfies the properties. Now, let us check uh, for the case when n is equal to 1. So, when n is equal to 1 case, so we have phi 1 x which is equal to by definition y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t y 0 d t. So, obviously, uh, phi 1 is uh, well defined obviously, phi 1 is defined and uh, f is continuous and y 0 is a constant function which is continuous. So, therefore, f is continuous and therefore, this uh, phi 1 is uh, phi 1 is uh, defined and has continuous derivative. It's continuous derivative on x 0 x 0 plus h. And also, if you find the estimate, so also 
the bound phi 1 x minus y 0 by definition this is less than or equal to integral x 0 to x f of t y 0 d t and f is bounded by m. So, this is less than or equal to m into x minus x 0 which is less than or equal to m h and which is bounded by k is b. So, obviously, phi 1 also satisfies these properties. So, therefore, this implies that this implies that uh, x phi 1 x is in R 1 and hence f of x phi 1 x is continuous on x 0 x 0 plus h. So, therefore, this uh, implies that can uh, the properties are properties are true for n is equal to 1. So, what we have proved in part a is the properties of phi n phi n uh, like they are all defined and uh, uh, phi n's are having continuous derivatives and when phi n is put into f that is also continuous and uh, phi n x phi n are in the rectangle these all properties are uh, true for n is equal to uh, n minus 1 that is what we assumed and from that we have proved that it is also true for the case n and it is also true for n is equal to 1 thus by thus by the method of mathematical induction so by the method of mathematical induction uh, phi n so phi n of that is a sequence of sequence of induction phi n sequence of functions defined in 1 by the Picard's iterands that possesses all desired properties all desired properties in the interval x 0 x 0 plus h. So, hence part a. So, part a of the proof is uh, established by mathematical induction. Now, we look into part b proof of part b. Part b what we are looking for? We are looking for an H for the Picard citrons. So, we again uh, we prove this again by mathematical induction we prove this also by mathematical induction mathematical 
induction. So, assume that is true for n minus 1, assume that the estimate is true for n minus 1 that absolute value of phi n minus 1 x minus phi n minus 2 x is less than or equal to m alpha to the power n minus 2 divided by n minus 1 factorial into x minus x 0 to the power n minus 1 for x in the interval x 0 x 0 x 0 plus h. We assume that the estimate is true, this inequality is true for n minus uh, 2. So, call this uh, inequality as 2. Now, by using uh, this inequality, we find the estimate for phi n. So, then phi n x minus phi n minus 1 x this by definition of the iterands is integral x 0 to x f of t phi n minus 1 t minus f of t phi n minus 2 t d t. So, by definition of the in the uh, definition of the functions phi n. Good. Now, by part a by part a. So, what do we, what do we have in part a? We have that phi n t uh, phi n x minus in part a we have shown that phi n x minus y 0 phi n x minus y 0. This is less than or equal to b for all n and x in the interval x 0 x 0 plus h which we have established in part a. So, hence uh, what we have is the point x phi n minus 1 x and x phi n minus 2 x these two both the points are in r okay are in the rectangle r 1 okay for x of course in the interval x 0 x 0 plus h since they are in r 1 uh, f satisfies all the nice properties in r 1 including the Lipschitz condition uh, continuity properties. So, therefore, by Lipschitz continuity by Lipschitz continuity of f. So, if you ap apply the Lipschitz continuity of f we have. So, on this uh, Okay, on this difference, if we apply Lipschitz continuity over here, we have so absolute value of phi n x minus phi n minus 1 x, which is less than or equal to alpha times alpha is a Lipschitz constant integral x 0 to x phi n minus 1 t minus phi n minus 2 t d t. So, here uh, obviously this is less than equal to 
integral x 0 to x f of t phi n minus 1 t minus f t phi n minus 2 t dt and uh, applying the Lipschitz continuity and the Lipschitz constant is alpha. So, the 4 alpha will come out is alpha times integral x 0 to x 1 phi n minus 1 t minus phi n minus 2 t. Now, by the assumption, so the what, what is our left hand side? Our left hand side is phi n x minus phi n minus 1 x is less than or equal to what we have is alpha times x 0 to x absolute value of phi n minus 1 t minus phi n minus 2 t dt. Now, by using our assumption okay, by 2 by 2 is our assumption. So, we assume this is our 2. We assume that for n minus 1 case this we have. If we assume this then we get this, uh, this is alpha times this alpha times integral x 0 to x. So, putting the values m of alpha n minus 2 n minus 2 by n minus 1 factorial and t minus x 0 to the power n minus 1 dt. If we integrate it, so with respect to t, so this is less than or equal to uh, you get m into alpha you can take uh, outside alpha to the power n minus 1 by n minus 1 factorial. Then integrating uh, integrating t minus x 0 we get t minus x 0 to the power n by n and you have to evaluate it at the point x 0 and x. So, this gives you that uh, when x is equal to when a t is equal to x 0 this vanishes and uh, t is equal to x we get x minus x 0. So, this is m to alpha to the power n minus 1 by n factorial n minus 1 into n n factorial into x minus x 0 to the power n. So, which uh, with a just an adjustment of uh, constants if I divide by alpha m by alpha into of alpha to the power n by n factorial into x minus x 0 is always uh, less than or equal to h. So, this is h to the power n. So, therefore, this is less than or equal to m by alpha into alpha h to the power n by n factorial. So, as x minus x 0 is less than or equal to h. So, therefore, this implies that the inequality is true for n. We assume that the inequality is true for n minus 1, then we could prove that the inequality is true for n. Now, for the case, so let n is equal to 1, check for the case n is equal to 1. When n is equal to 1, we have that phi 1 x minus y 0 is um, equal to integral less than or equal to 
integral x0 to x f of t y0 dt t t y0 dt and f of t y0 is less than or equal to m. So, therefore, this is less than or equal to m into x minus x0 which is uh, again less than or equal to m of h. So, it is true for the case uh, alpha is equal so n is equal to 1. So, therefore, it is true. So, for alpha is equal to 1 case it is true. So, therefore, by mathematical induction the inequality is true for all n. So, therefore, uh, this uh, proves part B. So, as uh, we have seen the total proof of the Picard's existence and uniqueness theorem is uh, divided into four parts. Part A gives some nice properties of uh, the sequence phi n and part B gives a very useful estimate for the sequence of functions phi n and both these parts are proved. Now, part uh, C and D in part C we will prove that the sequence phi n that converges uniformly to a continuous function and part D we will prove that that limiting limit function is a solution to the initial value problem. So, these uh, two parts we will prove in the next theorem, next uh, lecture. So, let us uh, just recall part A gives nice uh, properties on the sequence of functions phi n which are the Picard's iterates. Now, part B gives a good estimate for the Picard's it iterates phi n. Now, remaining part we will prove in the next theorem. Okay. Bye.